Hello, today I'll be talking about some of the data formats that can be used in TASL. One of the main objectives for using TASL is to perform genotype-phenotype association. TASL allows to import files in various formats for compatibility with other software, and here I'll describe briefly the characteristics of the most common data types that can be loaded into TASL. I will use the tutorial data to exemplify some of these datasets, and this tutorial data can be downloaded from the TASL website and is included in the software release. So I will start with the genotype files. There are several genotypic file formats in use by the scientific community, and currently TASL supports HapMap, HDF5, VCF, Blink, Filip, and FASMTA formats. All of them are very well documented online, so here I will only explain in detail the HapMap format. Since HapMap files can get very large, if they include several individuals and SNPs, GZIP compressed versions of the HapMap files are supported and encouraged. The HapMap file included in the tutorial dataset is called mdpgenotype.hmp.txt and here's what it looks like when you load it into TASL. For purposes of clarity, I will open the file as a spreadsheet. However, HapMap is a text-based file format or flat text where each field is separate by a tab stop character. So make sure that you save a text version of your file if you're using spreadsheet software like Excel to edit or create HapMap files. So here's what it looks like. The HapMap format stores all the information for individuals and SNPs in a single file and must be in order of position within each chromosome to be loaded correctly. The first row contains the header labels and each additional row contains all the information associated with a single SNP. The first 11 columns describe attributes of SNP like which alleles, chromosome and position uh, these SNPs are at. However, only chromosome name and position are required to have values in order for this uh, file to be loaded. Starting at the 12th field are, are the genotype samples. And the row column intersection corresponds to their corresponding genotype. So for example here we see that individual 3316 is part of the 282 diversity panel which we can see in the information from panel. And for the first SNP on chromosome 1, which we can see also that uh, has coordinates according to the first version of the reference genome assembly, we can see that it's homozygous for the C allele. Although here the genotype values are represented by two characters, you can also express them as a single character. And uh, you need to refer to the online documentation for further details on that. Also note that SSRs are no longer supporting TASL 5 because of memory efficiency of various data structures. However, one strategy to recode the SSRs as SNPs, and an example for that is provided in the online user manual. So when thousands of individuals are genotyped at millions of SNPs, tiles in this data format can become quite large. Compressing the files using GZIP helps but another alternative is to store the data in HDF5 format, which, interestingly, has been used as a standard by NASA. So you could tell your non-geneticist colleagues that genotypes are almost rocket science, or not. In any case, HDF5 format was designed to allow the rapid access of large datasets without having to load them into memory. In practice, once you load it, it will look exactly like this. This format is not used widely by many geneticists on Earth, so without a standard, TASL's HDF5 files can only be used by TASL. TASL allows data in this format to be exported into other formats, so if you want to use other software, you can also do that. Some of the other formats supported are VCF, Blink, Filip, and FASTA. Um, please refer to TASL documentation or Google each format to further get any details. For this tutorial we will focus on using the HapMap file. There is also another video that specifically addresses how to filter genotypes. Uh, back to data formats, there's other types of numeric data that are used in TASL and these are phenotypes, covariates for models, and relationship matrices. Um, similarly to genotypes in HapMap format, numerical data files should also be tab limited and should contain a header that defines the da data. Again, please make sure 
that you save your files as flat text if you use spreadsheet software. Also, do not, and I want to stress this, do not use white space characters in the fields within these files, for example, the sample names. This causes incorrect loading of the file, and this advice can be generalized as many programs out there use sometimes tab or sometimes white space as delimiters, so including white spaces within data fields can end up making your own lives much harder, and those errors are easy to fix, but hard to track down for developers. Anyway, uh, in case you have missing data, you can use NA uh, to code this information. So I'm going to load one of these uh, phenotype data in load. In TASL, phenotypic data is expressed as two-dimensional table with observations as rows and attributes as column. Again, for purposes of this video, I will show you the file using a spreadsheet software. And this is what it looks like. The first row should contain the word phenotype between angle brackets, like this. The second row should state in lowercase letters the attribute type for each column. The first column should always be taxa. The other possible attributes are factor, data, or covariate. The third row are the column names, and the subsequent rows are the actual data. Currently, TASL only models phenotypic data assuming they are numerical and continuous, so please be cautious if you have categorical data. In terms of statistical covariates that can be included in regression models, there are those of type factor, which are categorical and basically act as grouping factors in linear models, and numerical, which are attributes of the type covariate, like this one. And could be, for example, PC8 weights to control for population structure. Previous implementations of TASL would take independent files as input for phenotypes and diverse types of covariates and are still supported. Internally, they will be converted into a single type o, like this one. So all rows lead to the same numeric row. Finally, I will briefly talk about kinship and distance matrices. The supported format will first state the number of individuals or taxa and contain their names on the first column and then provide the square numeric matrix stating the distance or kinship values. And this is what it looks like when you load it. Those matrices can be calculated using TASL from pedigree or using other software packages. Uh, so I hope this was helpful and thanks for watching.